Guys, Mr. Biggs from Arizona for five minutes. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're going to put up on the board in just a second, but this is the this is the entire transcript of the Devin Archer testimony. I submitted to the record without objection. So ordered. Thank you very much. So, in this particular um, colloquy that's going on, highlighted up there, you'll see that Mr. Archer says. Uh, let, let's, let's start at the beginning. Let's go somewhere else. He says, uh, the question is, did he talk about, did Hunter talk about how bringing his dad, Joe Biden, either to Ukraine or using his dad as vice president would add value in the eyes of Burisma officials? Answer, yes. How did it come up? He says, well, we were business partners. It you know, just came up. We were business partners. We're business partners. Okay. What kind of leverage was Hunter trying to get by using his dad? Answer by Devin. I think it's more defensive, you know, defensive leverage, that, that the value is there in his work. Also in this, this same document, I asked him, I said, the brand, he said, what is it? You keep talking about the, the Biden brand. I said, is it Dr. Jill? Is it Brother Jim? No. It just looks at me like I'm an idiot. He says, of course it's Joe Biden. Of course it's Joe Biden. You get, then you go back and you see Tony Bobolinsky. What does he say? Quote, the Biden family aggressively leveraged the Biden family name to make millions of dollars from foreign entities, even though some were from communist-controlled China. And who is the Biden family asset? Is it Dr. Jill? No. Brother Jim? No. Any of the grandkids that got money through from foreign companies? No. Nope. None of those folks. None of those folks. Then you get the stuff released from Ways and Means yesterday. This is Hunter Biden saying to his brother, his uncle Jim, BS, Jim, all around BS. Explain to me one thing Tony Bobolinsky brings to my table that I so desperately need that I'm willing to sign over my family's brand. What's the brand? Joe Biden. And pretty much the rest of my business life. Why? Because that's the only product I got. Joe Biden, the, pre the vice president at that time. It's plain English. I'm cleaning it up a little bit. There's a lot of swear words in there. Why would I give this marginal bully the keys to my family's only asset? Oh, okay, so, so uh, you know, but we're told that, that there's nothing linking him. So I, I got to ask this question. Uh, Ms. Turley, I'm going to ask you a question. If the brand and what you're selling is Joe Biden, the then vice president, and if Joe Biden or his family is receiving some kind of benefit by the sale of access or, uh, uh, you know, I'll leave it there, selling of access or even the illusion of access uh, uh, to, to Joe Biden, what, is, what does that lead you to conclude? Well, if you look at actual cases that I've cited in my testimony, uh, benefits to family members can be uh, viewed as a benefit to the principal. So there's not much debate about that. Uh, the issue of the inquiry is, is whether there, uh, there has been pro let me stop say there has been progress in the last few weeks and that many people after the Archer testimony said, yeah, I get it. It's influence peddling. I, there, some have said it's the illusion of access, which that's is that's the new defense. Yeah, is, is that solution? but um, I think that calling it by its correct name is important and it is a form of corruption. Uh, the benefits to the family members can be attributed to the principal, even under the higher standard of criminal cases. So the, what remains is the question is, did the president know that, direct that, uh, participate in that? Well, we know that he made 20 calls to, to business associates. We know he's having dinners with those associates, which leads me to the follow-up question, which I think is critical here, because these guys are looking for the gold bars or the, the cash stuffed in the Menendez coat. That doesn't happen very often in my experience, having tried a lot of cases. So my question for you is, tell us about when you have circumstantial evidence vis-a-vis -vis direct evidence, what's its value? Can you rest a conviction on circumstantial evidence? You can. One of the things I point out, though, in my testimony is the Supreme Court has narrowed some of the elements on things like bribery, yep. a denial of honest services. Those elements are now narrower than they were. But it is notable in the Menendez indictment that they brought the conspiracy on honest services, that they still believe that these types of gifts uh, obviously can be based on a conspiracy theory. 
Uh, but you're, you're, you're clearly correct. I mean, if the allegations against Senator Menendez are true, that's really sort of old school bribery. Uh, not since Jefferson and his, his uh, freezer have we seen that type of raw uh, t uh, evidence. Today, it's a, it's a lot more sophisticated. Yeah. I think everyone in this room has to acknowledge that influence peddling is the favorite form of corruption in Washington. I think that's unassailable. And it's much more sophisticated uh, than uh, handing over gold bars or whatever is alleged in the Menendez case. Mr. Chairman, I have a, a, a document I'd like to, to get in. This is, I appreciate that my colleague trusts the American people. Mm -hmm. um, and the CNN poll that says the majority of Americans believe Joe Biden as vice president was involved with his son's business dealings. Submit that for the record. Without objection, so Mr. ordered. Mr. Chairman, I have another unanimous consent motion. Uh, I'd move uh, with unanimous consent to introduce an order from the Supreme Court of the State of New York from Tuesday uh, where the Trump Organization was found liable for fraud and is specifically on page 28 where there's a paragraph entitled, quote, the Trump brand premium that was increased the value of Trump assets by 15 or 30 percent according to the Trump Organization. Without objection, so order.